Welcome back to Force Education. This is Zeth. Today I'm going to be giving you an update on NOVM, Novin Incorporations. I'm going to go briefly through technical analysis and then I'm going to dive through the diligence part. The only reason I'm going through technical analysis is as it gives us a little bit of a perspective on the psychology of traders and the, the kind of price action movement um, of where it's actually going. Now, make sure to drop a like to this video to help the channel grow. Subscribe and leave notifications on. Let's jump right into it. So, Novin. On a one-week perspective, almost everything looks sloppy. The chart is almost unreadable. And so we're going to quickly move on to the one month, one day, just because we can't get much from that. On the one day, we get to see it has a chance on the ADX of starting a trend. Now, the William percent R is a little bit towards the overbought level. And the MACD looks like it's recovering, and so does the momentum. Moving averages are actually all bullish today. It's seen a really nice push on this level and it does look bullish with a chance of continuation of a trend. Now on a 2 hour perspective we get to see a really strong trend, MACD has curved up, ADX shows in a strong trend, Bullying percent R is round neutral and momentum is spiking. So on a 2 hour perspective it shows in there's a bit more to come for this one, a little bit more green. Now of course the candle is getting smaller and smaller so we might get to see a little bit of a pullback in the afternoon but it looks still bullish nonetheless. Moving average band for the sake of the argument is 55 cents on the top, 50 cents in the middle, and 45 cents in the bottom. Stochastic fast and stochastic slow are both signaling in that there might be another leg, but as well, be careful off pullbacks because that could be very common. Now, taking a quick look into a Fibonacci retracements, I had a little bit of trouble onto selecting where I would go back, uh, but. If we were to assume in the last month with the highest off 134 and then the lowest off 21 cents, we're looking currently at a significant support on Fibonacci retracements at 48 cents, resistances at 64, 78, 91, and dollar 10. Now, when we look into just normal price line action, we get to see a significant support level sits at 52 cents. Uh, maybe even we can consider one at 55 cents. And then below the 52 cents, we're looking at the 50 cents. Below the 50 cents, we're looking at 45 cents. And then below there, 40 cents. And then down to 33 cents. Significant resistances will be 61 cents from 61 to 68. 68, we're looking at a level of 76. And from 76, we're looking up to 86. There's still a lot of room to grow for this one and a room to push even further. Now, a little bit on the news, this was actually posted uh, a little bit a while ago, uh, though this is actually on the 4th, uh, and this was the notice of delisting or failure to satisfy a continued listing rule or standard transfer of listing. And on November 3rd, they received an approval to be moved uh, from the current listing they have towards Nasdaq Capital mar mar uh, Market. So, right here. Uh, the company filed an application to transfer the listing of its common stock from Nasdaq, Nasdaq Global Market to Nasdaq Capital Market. As a result of the approval, the company has been granted an additional 180 days grace period or until May 3rd, 2021, regain compliance for the $1 minimum bid. So there you go. They still have a compliance. A reverse split is not going to be seen at least for a little, or at least that's what we'd expect. Of course, they can do just a reverse split now and... You know just let it go but i really doubt that that's going to be the case previous prs i don't see anything significant from that point on until you go back all the way to october 3rd uh oh, sorry october 30th um and they also had the virtual conference that uh, is was presented on october 27th i do have the presentation update from there but before then let's take a quick look into the 10q5 so in terms of their current assets, you're looking at a really significant increase in terms of total assets, even current assets. Total current assets are 45 million compared to 15.7 million, so that is bullish. The total current assets, yep, uh, basically the same kind of total assets are around 47 million, so very much comparable of what you had for the total current assets. Although the increase is not as significant as it was for the total current assets from the year on year. Now, total liabilities, it seems to be decreased, so that is amazing, by around 20 million. When we look at the current revenue, you're looking at a total revenue of basically almost exactly the same. Total operating expenses has been cut, so your operating loss is around 1.2 million, or sorry, 1.17 million less. 
So that is significant there and it looks like they're on the right track. Now the big, biggest thing here, got 8.4 million, right? In net loss for the quarter. Their current cash and cash equivalent is around 100 and sorry, 43 million. So they still have a lot of time to basically fix this here without doing an offering. Now it really is dependent on what their mood is that day, right? Now we can go back and check for even more investor information, but basically I've gone back all the way to around October 14th and I haven't found anything significant from there on other than the ones I covered today. Now they do have a presentation update and I'm going to be going right through that right now. And some of the biggest thing here is, well, it's still basically part of the same things like ongoing pivotal phase three study with data targeted for quarter 2021. The company first potential NDA filing targeted 2022, a little bit of a longer term, leveraging nitric oxide naturally, and then he got significant market opportunities off around 3.4 million with their lead off SB206. Now the SB206, their targeted reporting top line results is for quarter 2, 2021 for phase 3. Now they do have a coronavirus uh, infectious disease, basically sodium, uh, sodium more of uh, therapeutic so it's first demonstration of antiviral effects of no against sars covid 2 in vitro human airway infections model but that's still preclinical so that might be a little bit out of the loop there in terms of you know we're almost getting to a vaccine we have therapeutics starting on the line as well so might be a little bit too late for it but if we look at a companion uh, companion animals they are also working on a new chemical entity or antimicrobial that is in preclinical as well now, when we're looking into, let's say, further for the nitrosyl oxide for therapeutic innovations, this one here is an antiviral and part of it as well for the NO is considered for COVID-19, but uh, we're not going to really address that COVID-19 part. But nonetheless, they do have viral replications against um, HSV, HPV, uh, and a bunch of other different viruses more information we covered that before sb206 lead program and as i said the pivotal phase 3 study is targeted for around 2021 and the models come that we did mention off around 3.4 million prevalences in the us with 1.3 di million diagnosed per annum with an average time to resolution of around 13 months 70 percent of the patients are below the age of 10 and they're working on the first ever um, so here, no FDA approved treatment. So theirs would be the first ever reach there. Potential NDA filing for that is around 2022. And they have they already done B Simple 1, B Simple 2, and they were successful. And now they're doing B Simple 4 with a top line result on quarter 2, 2021. As you can get to see, the data does look uh, quite substantial here. Integrated analysis demonstrated statistically significance of P of equal 0.038 with a complete clearance of 27.9 versus the vehicle of 20.9 at week 12. They also have the P simple for pivotal phase 3 study. That is the same study I'm talking about for the targeted results. The randomization is 1 to 1 with 850 subjects. Um, and so that is still exciting news for the later on catalyst in the future. We can go further on the COVID-19 program with the potential targeted NDA or sorry IND for 2021. Although I'm not very much of a fan of making this one a COVID play solely because we'll call it a spade a spade. Uh, COVID, you know, we're getting up vaccines. There's a lot of other you know players in there that are way ahead. Now they do have a pipeline in the background for all these different studies, and they get to prioritize it, and then you know probably switch the one for the coronavirus with one of these corporate overview they do have 43 million dollars as of cash a uh, cash as of september 30th and year to date net cash from financing activities is 50.8 million with a market cap of 73 73 million so they almost have enough cash to cover the market cap so you know that is something significant efficient capital through 2021 that is based on management's production uh, production and plan priority developments now of course 2021 is the next catalyst for sb206 as i mentioned with their pipeline they also have the ongoing nitrous discovery 
coming up next. That kind of covers all the presentation. We can look quickly into institutional buyers and we see that there's no significant recent plays from institutional buyers onto uh, NOVM, NOVM. And then insider purchases, it seems it's a little bit mixed, but it's been a while since they've actually made a purchase. Now comes to the question of, hey, what do we think is going to happen next? I think it's going to probably jump probably somewhere around the 62 cents and it's probably going to as well be a little bit of resistance over there, accumulate a little before it sees any further action. Now, do I think this one is solid? It's a little bit of a rough situation to discuss because this one here has been going a little bit down than I would like, 30.90 to around 50 cents. It's a little bit of a tough situation to be in. And even if we go, I think this is the maximum we can go, yep. It's a little bit of a tough chart to back up. So investments, I'm not sure. But you can definitely trade it and make some money out of it. What do you think about the sticker? Make sure to mention down in the comments. Please subscribe and like you. Have a wonderful day. And if you've survived this long into my brutal video, which is a little bit longer than usual, you'll find in the, disc in the link below a Discord channel or Discord server that is totally free and we just discuss technical analysis and everything in between. Jump on there. Have a good day.